Hey everybody, it's Tanel, Pro Tips for Paris. I just have a slight response to the article that just came out regarding the misplaced wheelchairs and how there are so many of them that are misplaced daily and mishandled and broken and lost and forgotten by airlines. So my experience was last November with Air Canada. I was flying to Barcelona, Spain to enjoy three days of Barcelona before making my way to Mallorca for a international wheelchair golf open championship. First one in the world, very cool. Figured I was flying fine by myself, which I normally do. My layover was in Frankfurt for hours. I got there, no wheelchair. I was told that my day chair had been transferred all the way to Barcelona and it would be waiting there for me when I got there. Joke's on me. After being pushed and wheeled in Frankfurt to a room where they put the children and anybody that is super, super high needs, it has a concierge at the front. You are not allowed to leave this room unless you sign out. I couldn't push the the airport chair around independently because it was one with those tiny ass little wheels on the bottom. So they put me in this room. I had no option of enjoying the airport, of getting out of the airport, of eating any food, uh, anything. So four hours in Frankfurt airport, nothing. Then I get to Barcelona. Thank God for me, I had a friend from the US who had just come into a little bit of extra spending money and was able to meet me in Spain. So I land knowing that my wheelchair should be there and he lands half an hour later. So I get there, no chair. And nobody speaks English as a first language. So here's to now traveling alone as I normally do. I'm in Barcelona, Spain, no wheelchair. I get put into the airport chair, wheeled around the airport, taken to all these individuals that have no concept of what's going on and English is spoken little if at all. The woman finally who was pushing me towards the help desk, complaint desk, whatever you would call it, gets this lady to finally tell me the truth of my wheelchair, my day chair, my legs, and my only mode of transportation and independent living has been left by Air Canada on the tarmac in Calgary. Fast forward, I'm in Barcelona for two days, sorry, three days. Two out of the three days, I don't have my chair. Ruins Barcelona for me. I can't move this chair independently. I can hardly fit it in the elevator of the hostel. It was brutal. They give it back. I continue on my way, had a great trip, golfed well, brought home the women's only, sorry, what was it? The women's bet, the women net best or something like that. I can't even remember what the prize was called. I did good. <laughs> and, uh, so six weeks, for six weeks, I tried to get a hold of Air Canada, called, emailed anything I could do to get a response on what they were going to do for me because they had absolutely ruined my experience in Barcelona. Six weeks later, I finally opened a Twitter account specifically to call out Air Canada in order for them to do anything about my situation. And lo and behold, just like that, they get a hold of me. Crap on them on Twitter and it's all like, in their face, they get it. So they apologized, finally. I got a sorry after six weeks. They said $500 Canadian for your troubles. My trip alone, just the flight was $1,400. I've never been to Spain before, not able-bodied, ever. I've never seen the country, they completely ruined and tainted the whole trip with this experience. 500 bucks was a slap in the face. So with fighting and more phone calls and getting bumped up in the food chain, I finally had them reimburse the flight to me, which I had booked through a travel agent thinking, so I only really got a fraction of it and nothing beyond that. So my experience getting left behind, my legs getting left behind. I'm so fortunate that they didn't show up damaged. 
that it showed up in working condition. I couldn't imagine if I had to go through the process of getting another chair because this one took over a year for me to get properly fit and for it to come, you know, specifically for me without any uh, bends or breaks or, you know, misalignment or angles, things like that. So I was lucky. My chair came in full working order after two days in Barcelona. I was very fortunate to have my friend traveling to meet me there. Otherwise, I would have, I don't know, lived in the airport for two days while they tried to get it to me. But who knows? Uh, my heart goes out to every individual that struggles with traveling and disability. And I hope that through these videos, we start to put it in people's faces so that they're reprimanded. And potentially, it would be cool if there was a room like when they lose and damage strollers and car seats, now you have a room in the airport and you get to go and pick another chair that they send you home in so you can live your life the way you do daily in your own chair independently. Let's see what all the airlines and airports think when we come at them with a $100,000 price tag for a room of extra devices just for wheelchairs, walkers, scooters, and a hundred gram barely scratches the surface. Every single individual airport needs one of these. This is gonna cost them millions. They better change their tune and change it fast. <laughs> Between January and September of 2019, US carriers reported having mishandled at least 7,747 chairs, an average of 29 chairs a day. The actual number of chairs mishandled is likely to be higher. According to disability advocates who claim many passengers don't formally report damage to airlines or are not immediately aware of that damage has been done. So American Airlines in 2019, for the first nine months, they mishandled 2,064 chairs and scooters. This is an equivalent of 3.4% of all devices it handles. It's far higher than the average airline of 1.6%. It's crazy. According to activists, part of the problem comes from the airline staff viewing wheelchairs as objects, like luggage, rather than crucial equipment that allows disabled passengers to move independently. So for a completely missing wheelchair, Air Emirates sent an individual an official email offering of 640 pounds towards a new wheelchair. That's less than a thousand Canadian dollars. My wheelchair costs close to 10,000. That's what you're gonna offer somebody for taking away their only means of mobility? It's bullshit. Emirates takes its responsibility for meeting the needs of our wheelchair passengers seriously. And we apologize to the passenger for the time it has taken to resolve this matter. I bet they didn't pay them for it. They just apologized and continued to damage all of the wheelchairs in the future. Now, a consultant, any consultant can make 300, 200 to $300 an hour. If we took that and build out every issue we had to everybody, people would owe us tens of thousands of dollars for the amount of time and bullshit required for this. You can't tell me that 650 pounds towards a new wheelchair didn't come at a cost of more than that in hours. I will, if you would like to read more <laughs> on this issue, I'll make sure to stick the link to this article in the description below. And if I can find a couple more articles, I'll make sure to list those as well. Thanks for listening. Pro tips for pairs, y'all. <laughs>